comedy genius. I don't deserve that. Well, I don't know. You're not bad. I mean, you, you try your best and you've got a funny bone, haven't you? Yeah, I feel like that word's sort of reserved for people like, you know, Einstein and the fella that worked out gravity and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Newton and, you know, the... Oh, the man genius. who invented the ginster's pasty, something like that. Yeah, he's genius. I mean, what an invention. You just hear it bandied about quite a lot nowadays, don't you? Genius. Genius. Genius album. All right, maybe not a genius. Kind of in between half-wit and genius. How about that? Yes, that sounds good to me. <laughs> For those who've never heard of you and who hasn't, explain what you do. Uh, I'm basically a, an erotic dancer. Oh, mm. sorry, do you want to be talking about the dancing? Are we talking about the comedy, the, D, the DVD and the, the La La Land thing? No, the dancing. Oh, the dancing. Yeah, I'm an actor, comedian, writery thing. And uh, I've made a show called La La Land with a whole sort of team of people. And it involves going into the real world as pretend people and, uh, and, and playing these characters out with... Uh, unsuspecting members of the public and professional people uh, and it all happens in the wonderful state of California, a place called Los Angeles in America uh, and it just is kind of about, it's about three characters a guy called Gary Garner who's like really wired, cabby uh, a psychic called uh, Shirley Ghostman mm. and a she'll be joining us on the programme later I'm told by my producer so we'll get her on the programme wow, mm. that sounds exciting mm. and who else, so there's three, we've got Gary we've got Shirley and uh, Brendan, Brendan Allen, who's a documentary filmmaker, who's a bit of a nod to Nick Broomfield mm. and uh, Michael Moore, Morgan Spurlock. And he's one of these people that's desperately, desperately trying to win prizes and he'll kind of kind of go to any lengths to win the prize. So he manipulates people and he's, he's not really he's not really very clever, but mm. he uh, he desperately uh, wants shiny things. Mark, I don't, are you in front of a computer screen right now? Uh, I'm not. I can see a microphone. Oh. Uh, other than that, everything's a bit dark. Write down this name, my name, Alex Belfield, and go and Google it after the programme because I'm frankly quite offended. I think you must have seen a picture of me to create Gary, and I know it's no compliment, and look at this face, but, I mean, it's almost identical. Have you oh ever run into me in God. the past? Are you a carrot top? Unfortunately. Wow, we But not just that, but the spiky carrot top as well. A spiky cut? Is it, is it a proper flat top or is it... I mean, in America they call it a buzz cut. Wherever I go, people just mock me for, for all kinds of reasons, but also now because of you. They're in there. They're in the other room now and they're desperately bringing up a Google image of you. <laughs> I think everyone, no matter who you are now, anyone listening to this is going to be Googling Alex Belfield. Why do you think an overweight ginger person would be funny? I don't know about the overweight bit. I'm really skinny. No, um, uh, no. Overweight... Uh, um, I don't know. I, I, uh, ginger people... I, I think the only reason he's ginger is because there's that sort of, I think, and this is probably paying you a compliment, that if you have something about you that almost gives you a bit of trouble, like I imagine at school, being a carrot top is a bit difficult, you strive against that to kind of... Uh, to to do something better than everyone else and Gary's got this kind of mentality of, of just like he can do anything he's like he's he's uh, well massively ignorant but he thinks he's kind of massive hugely talented and can mm. do anything this is where I have a problem you see I watch that on BBC 3 and I just cringe because I see myself it's almost as if some intervention from maybe, maybe Shirley Ghostman has come down and placed me inside you <laughs> Let's take I, a piece of music and then we're going to come back and talk to Shirley. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? All right. <laughs> so, I'm what's very... going on, Alex? Because well, I'm getting all sorts of vibes coming through. Are you love? And what? I'm already picking up on a few things. Mm -hmm. What they're saying to me, would you understand? I don't know what it is, but there's a fire. I, I can feel fire and fire. I think of you and I I don't know what it is but there's this burning like some sort of passion <laughs> of it's red fire are you a fiery sort of personality would you understand what I'm saying no I think I'm more of a shrinking violet to be honest well, with you well they're showing Shirley. me a very chubby man what's chubby got man. got red hair hmm. and he's a bit spiky on top Mm. Would you understand this? I've not done any research, right? I've not done no Googling, no nothing like that. Mm. And they're showing me this man. And what I'd like to say to you is I feel your pain. Mm. I feel your shame. Mm. But you're not to blame. You deserve that holiday. How are you supposed to know dogs couldn't feed themselves? <laughs> and he was a lovely little thing, wasn't he? Ben, <laughs> lovely little Labrador. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't your fault, so don't just think on, all right, and just let it go. Sure. where do you get these interventions from? These thoughts come into your head and the next minute you're changing the world. 
Well, things just happen. I don't know what it is. I just, I got this thing come through to me years ago. I was doing New Year's Eve at my uh, Uncle Ian's uh, house. Mm. And I was upstairs, you know, on the put, put you up thing, you know. And all the grown-ups were downstairs doing New Year's Eve and all that and kicking off. And I was upstairs with Sammy and Christine asleep. And all of a sudden, I saw this ghostly apparition appear right beneath, you know, at the end of my bed. And this weird, like, shadow. And I heard this ghostly moaning, like, Ooh! and... And I ran out that room like a bat out of hell and I smashed straight into my Uncle Ian who was at the top of the stairs crying. And he said to me, you must not breathe a word of this to anyone, Shirley. Do you understand? <laughs> and he put one of those, uh, you know, those sticky toffee, uh, those toffee little pennies from the quality street. Yes. put one of those in my hand and closed it. And then he went off downstairs and I was just, I was shocked. But that's when it first came to me. And, and since then I've been, uh, you know, proper spiritual medium. I remember seeing you once on Jonathan Ross. How did that go from your perspective? I thought it was bloody brilliant. It was. Can I say bloody? No, not no, really. I thought it was brilliant. You know, I th- <laughs> Jonathan, he's he's great, and it went down so well. I mean, if Kurt Cobain hadn't come through shooting his mouth off, then it, well, things would have been all right. But you know, things happened. But can I just say I've got another prediction yes. coming through, oh, really? Alex, hmm. and that is that you're going to come in to a lot of money. Not bad, is it? Wow. Yeah, that's what they're showing me. You're coming into a lot of money, hmm. and I don't know what this is, but that you've got a new, you've got extra money, you've got this lovely house, hmm. and you've got, oh my, this is great. Have you, do you know, has this already happened to you, or is this something that's going to well, happen? I've recently got a two up, two down with a large back passage. Well, Could no, this I'm, be? No, I'm th- this is big money. We're talking a lot of money, huge money, and you've got people, you, you've got people looking after you. Good you've fun. got people waiting on you, and you've got a lovely ramp what goes up to the front door. It's the same house, you've got all these extras, <laughs> and this little stair lift thing. And I'm seeing you, and you've got this rod on your head. It's an insurance claim! But it's a wonderful insurance claim. Surely you're always full of optimism, and you, you lift my spirits and little else. Yes. Thank you, Alex. I'd like to say goodbye to you now, because frankly, it's best I go. God bless. But uh, send my love to Gary and to Mark as well, and uh, all the people on the show. La La Land is the new DVD that's out now. It's also probably going to be repeated three million times on BBC Three. And I'm glad that being ginger and clinically obese and deeply unattractive, you feel my... um... I feel your pain. I feel your shame. And can I just say, Alex, if you don't go out and buy that DVD, this is to everybody listening, something horrible's going to happen. So I don't want to sound spiteful or mean, but something horrible might happen to your friends or family. So you need to go and get that DVD right now. Get that DVD. You understand? Love you, Shirley Ghostman. Okay, love and light. Spook you later. Alex Belfield in the morning. BBC Radio Leeds.